Hi, welcome to the fourth episode of The Art of Making Ruth Ravina. Uh, I hope all of you have enjoyed my previous videos and many of you have been asking so many questions. I am so overwhelmed with all of that. Now, uh, and also a surprising fact is for me uh, is that I never thought so many people will be interested in making a vena of their own and all the kind of messages that I'm getting that it's so overwhelming for me that so many people are getting so many things from my videos. So now today's episode, it's all about the peacock and the sharab. Peacock, just like Dandi, is a very important part. This peacock and Dandi are the key together uh, to the volume sustain and everything. On previous video, I have told you about all the uh, parts of Dandi and how to make the Dandi. Once a Dandi is prepared, then we can go for the peacock. If you are making a bamboo vena and you don't want to use any peacock, then you don't really have to worry about that. You can just make a, a you know, kind of a bridge holder here and place your java rings and block, block this side with a wooden piece and you don't have to worry about anything else. Your dandy itself becomes the peacock. And you should not feel so bad about it because these kind of veenas also wear their long back. Now, on the next part, the very first wooden peacocks that we can see nowadays on bamboo vena those wooden peacocks were completely blocked. There was, this whole area was blocked from inside. There was no hollow part at all. And the bridges were just sitting on the sides. And then here on this side, there are one, two, or in my case, three string holders, which are just pieces of bone in a cylindrical shape, cylindrical shape which are put inside here and the strings are tied to those parts. And if you look in traditional venus, I have a peacock here. This, pe this was the peacock of my very first vena. I'll go into the details of this peacock later on. If you see in the tra traditional venus, the peacock is facing to the front. So if this peacock was like this, the peacock's face will be on that side. And now in Darby style venus, the peacock's head is twisted towards the audience and somehow it just feels so beautiful to look at this kind of peacock. Uh, now, why this peacock is so much important? The peacock, the bridges are set on the peacock and from here all the sound, all the vibration is going inside the dandy. So uh, if the peacock is not properly made or if the physics inside there is not working properly, the vena will not ever sound as well as it should. On traditional long back, on traditional venas, this whole peacock used to be blocked. There is no hollow inside. Now, after Dagar Saab made his first venas, he hollowed out some part of the peacock, some part from the inside. He created a rather shape inside, which obviously added up to the sustain, to the volume, and to the resonance. And all those venas, they sound beautiful after so many years. Now, on this peacock, though it was made quite long back after this dark style peacock came to existence, and it this peacock belonged to a traditional vena, but this peacock, when it was made, it was just made around two, three years back. So I wanted the hollow out from the inside. So what my first maker had done was, this is the inside. So you can see there is a little bit hollow, but then this is where it goes inside the dandy. There is hardly one finger gap. And this hollow area also is not quite enough. And then there is also another this rounded shape 
it is believed that it adds to some tonal quality but on either of my peacocks I haven't kept any of these and I have increased the hollows so much more and this area, this joint area, this hollow I have made it as big as possible. As a result somehow these venas of mine they have much more longer sustain and resonance and the volume also compared to the size is a little bit bigger. Obviously if there are some wooden parts and those parts are in correct places that will add to the tonal quality and if you know where to put that wooden part and how that will affect the tonal quality that's a great thing and that's a area of you know exploring huge area of exploring but in my case I somehow decided not to fall into that and all my peacocks they are totally hollow from inside and this all which goes inside the dandy that hollow is also as big as possible so on my dandy walls those are five or six mm walls and the all walls all is again the part of peacock which goes inside the dandy those all walls also i kept around five six mm to you know increase the hollow inside and then the whole inside of the peacock is hollowed now when it comes to a dagger style vena the peacock more or less looks the same as my peacocks uh, but my peacocks are a little bit bigger than a usual dagger style vena and also if you look at the tummy this tummy is a little bit more slanted and a little bit more fuller on dagger style most of the dagger style venas this is a straight line here so what happens is the hollow part which can be created inside that scope is a little bit more less in a dagger style vena in my peacock as the belly goes down like this there is a little bit more space to hollow out so that somehow also adds to the resonance so the basic reason why we hollowed out the inside of the peacock is if there is a hollow just below the bridge it helps so if you look in all the instruments like sitar sarod guitar violin just the area below the bridge is always hollow and that's kind of wide that's the widest part of all the instruments obviously there are some exceptions but usually that's how the instruments are made and if you look at more, most of the instruments below the bridge there is this rounded area so somehow I wanted to keep that and on this vena as I have mentioned earlier in my previous videos I went totally extreme and this rounded part is so much more and then I after the bridge I just extended the peacock towards the dandy a little bit more and then the thing is it obviously added up to the uh, sustain and volume and everything but there is also another thing that we have to consider is the string gauges and the strength of the players uh, mijrab so this vena it can sound so much more louder but the string gauges that's needed for that and the plectrum strength is needed for that i don't have that so i couldn't use this vena's highest potential so i then i created a smaller version of this vena which is in front of me right now and i fixed a lot of more bugs now on these peacocks usually the javaris are connected on the midpoint of the dandy so this is where on traditional venus the javaris will be but then comes the problem on this side of the chitaris the javaris go too low and it gives most of the players a lot of difficulty to play the chikaris so what i have done in my vena is instead of putting the chikari on this side main chikari is exactly parallel to the 
meet point of the dandy i have raised it higher much more higher to a position where i am comfortable where my fingers are comfortable and after doing that i repeated that on a veena of which was being made from a student and she also felt so much more comfortable with that veena to see if the traditional veena traditional kind of jewelry placements are actually that good enough or is this placement not at all needed i made her play all the older veenas that i have here and after playing all the three veenas here she confirmed that yeah raising this chikari this side chikari a little bit higher it helps to play so that's about it and then as i have mentioned earlier in my dandy video this peacock area should be one rudra on traditional venus on dagger veena it can be a little bit more a little bit more bigger but on my veena it's actually a little bit around 1 inch bigger than my rudra why i'll explain that when i talk about the sharab part so now about the sharab if you are making a traditional veena you don't really have to worry about sharab your dand is continuing till the end now you can just make a small lotus piece and block this side from this uh with this lotus on bamboo veenas however there didn't used to be a blocking always on this side but for wooden veenas we always block with a lotus or even it can be just a simple plain piece of wood this lotus part is just basically for a decoration now if you want to make a dagger style veena then traditionally on dagger style veena this sharab is of three rudras and then now comes how why dagger style veenas are of 12 rudras where tra traditional venas are 11 rudras you see this area right here after this meru or this nat till the sharab joint this area is the 12th rudra and a little bit part goes in the peacock as the dagger style peacocks are also just a little bit more bigger than the original rudra so this area here this is what we refer to as one maharudra and then you have three rudras of the sharab on traditional veena again you have three rudras for the peg box now if you look at here on my veena after the knot i don't have this maharudra i have just about half or even less than half of my own rudra so that allowed me to extend my peacock a little bit more than a dagger veena and then on many of the dagger veenas i have seen rather than going with the rudra measurement they follow a basic measure for the sharab which is about 15 to 16 inches 3 inches for the sharab head and then rest of those area for eight pegs on my veena i noticed that somehow because my uh, palms are quite small i don't need that much of area instead of having 15 inches sharab on this veena i have only 14 inches i left more than 3 inches for the sharab head and still if you see all the pegs are fitting properly and nicely and still I can hold both the pegs with both my hands there is enough space between the pegs so again it can depend on the player's comfort comfortability if your hands are much thicker than mine you obviously will have to go for a little bit bigger sharab or in that case naturally your sharab will be longer because of your rudra will be much longer than my rudra now about the sharab on traditional veena it doesn't really matter if 
it's a bamboo vena, you can keep this part open. On Daga style venas, there are both variations. Some sharab faces are, they have a small hole where you can stick one finger and some are closed. On this vena, this vena belongs to my husband. I got married by the way, this vena. This vena belongs to my husband. When this vena was made, there was this hole here. Later on, I myself closed this hole with piece of wood and paper. And you won't believe how much it changed its sound. The volume and sustain, everything became much better. And this vena also had the traditional dagger style pickup, which I later on changed with my kind of pickup. With uh, my peacocks are a little bit more bigger, the uh, belly is a little bit more slanted, and the chikaris are not parallel. The main chikaris, they are a little bit higher. So somehow now my husband is a little bit more comfortable to play this veena. And by the way, this veena, we did a lot of experiment on this veena. I changed the jawari, you can see the jawari, uh, sorry, I changed the ara, it's not a traditional veena ara. And there are so many things going on. So now, once you have cut out the outer side of the sharab, then you have to hollow out the whole inside area of sharab. And then you can keep this part, this mouth open or closed depending on how you want it. The only thing I want to mention here again is that the wood selection. For peacock, peacock adds to the sound. That's a key area of where the sound is generated. So for a peacock, you have to go for a heavier wood. If your dandy is made of teak wood, you can make your peacock of teak. You can make your peacock out of ebony, coco bolo, any kind of hard wood that is available there. And also you can use rosewood or shishu wood for the peacock. On the contrary, this sharab area, there is this hollow part inside that will resonance, res resonate a little bit. But at the same time, where this nut is, after that, this area doesn't really add up to the sound so much. So it doesn't really matter what wood you're using here for the sharab. In my case, on this vena, this sharab is made out of teak wood, adding a lot of weight to the vena. And it's not so convenient to have a very heavy sharab on your lap because the vena won't be so much stable. On my vena, here I have teak wood dandy continuing. But on this vena, when I decided that I want a sharab on my vena, my guru, my previous guru Balaji, he told me that for, as sharab doesn't really add up to the sound, you can decrease the size of the sharab, it won't hamper. And also instead of a heavy wood sharab, I can go for a much lighter wood sharab. And after making this, I have noticed that yeah, it actually helps a lot. The lighter the wood of the sharab, the more stable the vena will be on your lap. And it's much easier to balance. This theory is again confirmed on my student's vena. And then, if you really want to have a sharab and still you want to even minimize this part, that is also possible. You can just have five or six pegs here depending on your choice and then these three chikari pegs can be shifted here without any problem so then you have this decorative shadow which will give you the strength of the vena and then the length will decrease and make that will make the vena more you know uh, easy to carry around and these three chikaris on the dandy, it has been there. On traditional vena, the chikaris are usually on the dandy. 
and on Saraswati Veena also the Chikaris are on the Dandi. On my previous guru Balaji's Chandra Veena, he has experimented with both the things. He kept the Chikaris on Sharab, then he put the Chikaris on Dandi and then he confirmed that yeah it doesn't really matter, both can be done. So it again uh, depends on how you are comfortable and how you want your Sharab area to be. There is no hard and fast rule that you have to follow for the Sharab. The only thing is you it has to be hollow from the inside. And how much decoration you want on the Sharab head depends on you. How much curvature of the Sharab you want also depends on you. I didn't really want a very slanted Sharab. So my Sharab is not so slanted. On this Veena, the Sharab is not so slanted. It's so almost like straight. So all of them, they work fine. The only thing I would like to add here is that if this area is kept plain, then these manikas or these fine tuners, they tend to work better. On this Sharab, because of these decorations here, none of the manikas work as well as they work on this Veena. Likewise, on this side also, there is this decorative uh, ada wood which continues till the end and somehow that also made the manikas on this Veena almost useless. So think about it. But if you want to do inlay works here, that's fine. And if you want to do some other kind of decorations, that's also fine. Just wood carving here, if not done correctly, might hamper the function of the manikas. That's all. So that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video and the information I shared here helped you. Enjoy making your veena. Thank you.